Okay, stitch and scrump. We're starting scrump. It's been a while. We're going to start slow. Um, I had college and finals and things. So, I put all the stitch yarn... I separated out anything labeled stitch and put it back in the box. And I put the scrump yarn in the little baggie. So, we're starting with the light teal for scrump. So... Does this just go on around? Yeah, I think so. I'm gonna see if I can find the center. Are you the center? You look like you might be the center. Ah, it is. How lovely. Great. Good. Um, these are gonna catch on things if I keep them on. So, we're starting with this, and we're starting with a magic ring. We're doing eight single crochet instead of six. So, let's get started. Got the hook that came with the kit. And we're going to magic ring. So, I'm going to take this end, and I'm going to bring it over my fingers and wrap it around. I'm going to lay it down, and I'm just going to hold it with these fingers just to keep it from moving around. So it's just wrapped around there. This is my tail. This is my working yarn. What's what's on the other side connected to the ball. I'm going to go under this tail. I'm going to grab this loop of working yarn. Bring it under. And twist like that. My hook. And then I'm going to pinch. Take this hand out. And then bring this working yarn up. So that I can do a chain to close the, to hold the circle. So I'm switching to the other hand to pinch. Now I'm going to let go and let it rotate back. So this is what we look like now. Okay. I have separate videos on magic circle if it is confusing a lot of people. I mean, I certainly struggled with it at first. Okay, so. A single crochet. So. Insert into the loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over again, catch that yarn, pull it through both loops. That is one single crochet. You can put a stitch marker in here if you are new to magic circles so that you can know exactly where, where your stitch is, but that's one. We're going to do that seven more times. So insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook for two. We're going around both this tail and this loop. Three. Four. Five. Six. Ah. Don't catch wrong loops. Seven, right? Okay. Alrighty, so here we go. Got our eight stitches, and we're going to pull this tail to tighten this up. We will secure that later. So now, you don't count the loop on your hook. Each one of these little V's on top is the top of a single crochet. So we'll count around two, four, six, and eight. Now, let me grab a stitch marker. And I've inserted under that eighth stitch from the hook, the first single crochet we made, both loops, and I'm going to do a single crochet, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook, and now I'm going to put a stitch marker to mark this first single crochet. And then 
since we're increasing all the way around, we need another stitch in the same exact spot. So under the same loops there, a second single crochet, and then two in each remaining one around. So one, two. So two in there, it makes this little like arch. And the next two, one, two, and the next, one, two. Make sure you're getting both of those under the same stitch and you don't accidentally move on to the next one, going into the same spot again. One. I've been working with big yarn lately and so using this tiny, it's not even tiny yarn, but using this size again is like, like I was doing this yesterday. In the last. Okay, now we will be now alternating single crochet and then increase all the way around. So in the first stitch, we'll put one single crochet. In the second stitch, we'll put two single crochets for an increase and then repeat that single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase all the way around. So I'll remove my stitch marker, keeping an eye on that stitch there. Do the first single crochet and put the stitch marker back. So that's our first single crochet of the round. And now in the next stitch here, we'll put two. So you can count this if you want one, two, three, or one, one, two, or one increase, however. So increase. And then again, in the next stitch, we're putting one. In the next stitch here, we're putting two. Okay, and repeating around. So now one here. Two here. One and now two. Now I slowed down a little bit at the beginning of this because I usually assume that like at the beginning of the stitch part I will have gone pretty slow and like explained things more but just in case it's been a while. Okay so now we have a good place to demonstrate how these look different. So like this in here, this is our second round where we increased in every stitch around. And you can see these little windows it makes. And then in this round up here, it's a little less noticeable. But here we have the same little window with 
four loops going in. And then here we have a single, just the two loops, and it's kind of a smaller, it's hard to see, but it's a smaller opening. And that's how you can spot those. Um, single crochet two, increase around. So now we're doing the same thing we just did, except we're doing two single crochet first. One single crochet in each of the next two. So I'm going to put this first one in. Put the stitch marker in. And then one stitch in the next. And then two in the next. And we're going to repeat that around. So one, two, and then three and four, three and four into the same stitch. And we're going to repeat that all the way around back to the stitch marker and then I'll be back. Okay, so here we are at the last couple of the round. Our last repetition, so one, two, and then three and four in the last <clears throat> before the stitch marker. And our next round, there's three and four. Uh, you know what? Let's fasten this end or tie it down. Oh, this is the one with the funky needle that I put in a container because it's very small. One moment. All right, I couldn't find it, so I'm just gonna use one I have. It's like a small, clear, flexible one with a round tip, but since it was pretty small, I kept it in a little tin, and now I'm not sure where it is. Alrighty, so that doesn't matter. We're gonna tie this off. I'm just gonna go under a nearby loop. I'm going to hold this so that I can't pull it all the way through. Then I'm going to go through the loop with my needle. Pull that down. And now, just to weave this in a little, I'll go in a couple stitches here. This is going to be harder with this bigger thing. Maybe I will bother finding the other one. And weave this in around. And then I'll probably just leave it sitting there. I might trim it if I if it gets on my nerves and it's in the way. Okay. That's good enough for now. Where did that go? Now I'm going to have lost that one. All right, we give up for now. Alrighty. And now. We just did round four. These are your rounds, by the way. This center one. One. And then this next circle out. Two. Two. And then three here, and then this is four that we're working, well, that we worked on now. Now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to just step up to three. So I'm going to do the first single crochet. I am going to trim that. It's going to get on my nerves. One. Two three and then four and five both go into the next stitch for the increase four five so repeat that around if your interval doesn't match up at the end like if you end on a single crochet instead of an increase um that's usually an indicator that something went wrong so check your stitch count and everything check your intervals um and stuff, but I'm gonna finish out this round and find both needles and be back. 
Okay, so I found the needle. It wasn't the very small one, but it was the one with the weird rounded tip. The very small one was from Winnie the Pooh. I found that one too. All right, where are we and what are we doing? We just did round five, single crochet three and then increase. Now, six is just another step up. So we're gonna do the first single crochet that's one. And then we're doing four before our increase. So that was one, two, three, four, and then increase. And repeating that all the way around and I'll be back. Okay, so here's the end of that round and we are going to step up one more time before we start doing single crochet around. So we're gonna do five this time. So we'll do that first single crochet, put this back. And now I think you might be able to see a little better how the increases make a bigger opening. So like in here, you can't really see that line as well, that open thing. But as you go around, you can kind of see where the increases show up a little better. It's really hard, I think, to get it to show up on the camera. What was that one? Two. three, four, and five, increase. And then we're gonna repeat that all the way around and then come back. Alrighty, so here's the end of round seven. So we'll check our stitch count before we start doing all our rows of single crochet. If you're newer, probably check your stitch count more often just to make sure, but like I said, as long as your intervals are working out before now, you're probably fine. But um, I'm gonna do a stitch count. So each of these, like I said, these little Vs is the top of a single crochet. So I'm gonna count by twos, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48, 50, 52, 54, 56, 48, 50, 52, 54, 56, 48, 50, 52, 54, 56. So that's how many we wanna have. Now for the next several rounds, through round 20, round eight through round 20, it's just single crochet in each stitch around. So every round for the next Next round, so you're gonna single crochet in each stitch around. So I'm gonna mark off, I'm gonna write down my row numbers here, eight, nine. And then as I go, I'll mark off the rows just to help keep track. I can always count my rounds if I forget to mark off, but you know, this will give me an idea of what I'm doing. And then for each one of these, remove your stitch marker, do your first single crochet, stitch marker back, and then one single crochet in every stitch around, like so. And then at the end of the round, always remember to move your stitch marker and just do this through round 20. And this will start shaping our head and giving, you know, building up the walls of it, so to speak. So just like this, one single crochet in every stitch around. The 
that's catching a tiny bit of yarn that I don't want it to. Okay, so just like that, all the way through round 20, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 rounds total. So I'm going to go through 20 and then I will be back. Okay, so this is after round 20, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. And this is where we're at. This is much bigger. Like, with them sitting next to each other, I see this, this is smaller. This is made smaller and this is, or enlarged, because this is much bigger than Stitch's head. And now I can see these are, the detail is enlarged but anyways so scrump is going to be bigger than i thought which is fine now we're going to decrease so single crochet five and then decrease we're going to work backwards from how we worked up earlier so i'm going to put the first single crochet in one stitch marker back in two three four, five, and now we're gonna decrease. So uh, the traditional way of doing this is to insert under the next, pull up a loop, and then insert under the next stitch in the row, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops, like so. And then repeat so you want to make sure you're working into the next stitch in the round and not the corner edge of where you just worked because this kind of can lean to the side sometimes so make sure you double check what your next stitch is one two three four five and then decrease so <clears throat> insert pull up a loop insert under the next pull up a loop yarn over pull through all three loops and continue that around 
And again, not working into that corner, but making sure you're working into the next stitch. So I'm gonna finish this round around and be back. Okay, so that round's done. And now we're just gonna step it down again. This time to four. So that's one, two, three, four, decrease over the next two, and repeat that, oh, what am I calling? Repeat that around. And I'll be back. Alrighty. So this time we are not stepping down to three. We're going down to two, which is rather tricksy of them. So I'll put my stitch marker back. That was one, this is two, and then decrease. And just finish that out around repeating that and I'll be back. I'm back early. A thing that tends to happen, I think, with this portion of like usually the head area is when you're coming off of the decrease. Um, if you're not paying attention, you might pull this loop to reach this stitch. So I already tightened it down by habit, but... Okay, so if you do, I'll do a couple like this. This called a tiny loop, okay. Okay, so. Okay. So if you look back here at the beginning, all these openings are pretty small up here near the top. And if you look here where I've just been, you can see that they're already a little bigger. And that's one. Basically, if you don't keep a watch on this and just uh, let it pull out, which I really habitually tighten mine down, so it's a little bit actually hard to demonstrate, but here, we'll get this bigger opening there from letting this loop get too big after the decrease. So here's a previous decrease and there's the opening there. So that's something to watch out for because you gotta reach to get to that stitch because you're leaning to the side. So decrease. And if you just kind of bring your hook over, it makes that loop bigger. So I move the hook on the loop and just bring it down and try to keep it pretty close so that they'll still be even. and smaller. So now I'm gonna finish it out and be back. Alrighty, so the next round is just alternating single crochet and decrease around. So one single crochet, one decrease. One single crochet, one decrease. I'm just going to keep going around, making sure I don't get tricked by that corner. One single crochet. One 
one decrease. Alternating around and trying not to let my loops get stretched out too much and making sure I tighten down a little so that this area doesn't end up with gaps. Now, decrease has this kind of diagonal piece as opposed to this, which is just the two, one, two. It's got this diagonal. If you're not sure what you did next or want to check your intervals, like here, this was the decrease here. Here's a single crochet. And they're also a little thicker if you feel them. Alternating around. Last set. All right. Now we are going to decrease around. And these decrease ones are pretty fast. That's why I'm not, not bothering to turn the thing off, so. I'm going to start with a decrease this time and then put my stitch marker back in. And then after this round, we're going to stuff. And I'm just kind of folding the other side, this opposite side, I'm just kind of pushing it down as I go so it's not in the way. And as these rows get smaller, just make sure you're paying attention because as it has kind of more to reach once as the opening gets smaller it can be harder to or rather it can be easier to fall for the corner of a previous decrease especially when you're having to manipulate the work like this to make sure it's reachable this has a loop on it that's not meant to be there there we go Okay, we probably, they probably should have had the stuffing before now. I, I see no reason to wait until now, but we did. The bag of stuffing is not in the box. Where did I put it? Huh. I'll be back. All right, so I found the stuffing and I'm going to stuff this and be back. Okay, so I would definitely recommend filling this, like, I would say, because I took some out, because that, why would I try to fill it through such a small opening? Um, I took out round 25, um, and I'm back now right near the beginning of, of that, so... This is an example of why it's good to be able to spot your decreases and know what they look like because some of it came out even more by accident as I was stuffing. But if I look here at my previous stitches, right here, I have 
two single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, and then I have a decrease. And then here I have single crochet and then a decrease, which makes this the last part of round 23 and this stitch here, the beginning of 24. Because you can check those intervals. So yeah, definitely like trying to stuff it through such a small opening, I think is kind of silly. I'm going to stuff this a little more and make sure like these edge pieces are nicely filled and like rounded. That's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm going to pull this way up so that it doesn't, doesn't back out. So I, yeah, I'll probably put a little note in the thing that I would stuff after 24 because why, why, why would you not? So when I push down, there's still, I can feel still kind of quite a bit of space in here for this to be firm. So I'm going to keep adding some and keep testing it like that. Okay. We might need a little bit more once we get the next round in, but because there's still probably maybe a little bit more. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to redo the one that I took out and to get back through round 25 and I'll be back. Okay, I did add more stuffing so that it none of these were really visibly dimpling in and it's pretty firmly stuffed. And now the last round is to decrease around. And when you get to the end here, it's you always end up with a little bit of gapping, but I try to minimize it. And I also use my fingers as I work my way around to push the stuffing down so that it doesn't get caught in the hook. So that's the first decrease and we're just decreasing around. And we have pretty far to reach, but we're gonna try to keep these smaller openings. There we are. Now, cut yarn, fasten off. We don't need a tail for this, so I'm just going to go under the next stitch, pull up a loop, pull through the loop of my hook to do, to tie it off, to do a slip stitch. I almost feel like it, it's got this little dimple right here, but... The rest of it's pretty good, so I think I'm going to leave it. So I'm going to cut this and weave this end. And now you can see how as we get to the end here, it really doesn't um, cover as well. But the uh, in this case, we got this like collar and it's going to be set on the head. So we're not going to, or on the body, so we're not going to see this. Which is nice. So I'm just going to
weave this around a little and then after securing it under a couple of stitches I'll just disappear it into the body like this and then I'll pull this so that when I cut it it snaps back in and there we go so there's the head and that'll be it for this one and uh, I'll probably do let me I might do some of the like the extra arm the second arm and the second leg in the meantime um I probably will to have them ready and yeah next time we'll hopefully make the body and get moving right along with with scrub so hope this was helpful and see you next time.